Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome to MDLR Fishing. I'm telling you what, we have been around the world for the past few days trying to go after some big fish. And uh, the bite has just been really bad. So uh, we're back here where the last time that uh, we fished this spot right here, I was able to catch two nice sized black drums. So that's what we're gonna do again today. And hopefully uh, I'm gonna be able to put on a show for you all. So welcome back to the channel. Let me get rigged up and we'll get started. Them winds are horrible. They are howling. At least they're coming in out of the south, which is gonna make the marsh get filled back up with some water. We really need this. Not for the style of fishing that we're doing today, but we, uh, we need to fill up our base system so that we can get back on that kayak and start fishing from there again. I don't get skunked as much whenever you're on a kayak because you can hunt the fish down versus this right here. You're hoping that your bait is gonna put out a big scent trail. So if anything is in the area, they're gonna smell it and they're gonna come find your bait. So you gotta use the good stuff. Don't throw them any rotten garbage. They're just like us. They want the filet mignon. All right, let's get this thing. I hate doing this. I was gonna say, let's get it rigged up, but, oh, it's so tedious. That's what happens whenever you buy super long rods. These surf rods are sometimes in excess of nine, 10 feet. This one's 11 and always having to uh, break it down. I'm not the kind of guy that likes to just let these rods dangle out to the tailgate. They cost too much money. So you always got to break it down and then, okay, which one's the, I think this is it right here. You always got to break the rod down so that no small little micro particles go through the air when you're on the highway and it hits these graphite blanks They'll just destroy, it'll disintegrate. And all the while you'll think it's a, uh, a big fish that broke your rod when in all actuality, a micro fracture, a crack or anything like that in your blank will cause it to explode whenever you try to set the hook on these big boys out here. <laughs> you, think, you think you're a Bass Pro guy with that uh, crazy, awesome looking hook set. He's like, nah, brah, don't get it twisted. You ain't, that big fish didn't do that to your rod. You didn't take care of it. I've been going through a lot of blue crabs. I get the question a lot as well. Hey, where are you finding blue crab? You know, where are you getting the blue crab from? Whenever the bait shops have them, that's whenever I take advantage. I'll, uh, when I call them up, uh, I get there immediately as fast as I possibly can, and then I'll buy them in bulk. And I have an ice chest at home, and I layer the ice chest with ice packs. And um, what you do is you put an ice pack on the bottom, and you get a, a wet rag or towel, and lay it over the ice pack. And then you just layer these guys in there and uh, it'll put them in that dormant state. They'll stay good for about a week or so. Um, contrary to my past belief that they were gonna stink if I did that, they do not. The, uh, the cold uh, keeps all of that stench away. And these guys, you'll see that they're still moving their little mouths and, and whatnot whenever they come to. They'll get feisty as well if they get warm enough. But yeah, look at that. Nice oozing juices. These guys are ready to go. Let's get this fella ready and then uh, we'll get started with our fishing day. So 
so that's it right there now it's uh, back to the waiting game my past few trips that I've come here I've always been able to catch with exception to like I want to say one trip one or yeah one trip maybe uh, if my memory serves me correct uh, I've had to wait probably three four hours before getting the first bite so hopefully we're not gonna have to do that and these guys will bite immediately the conditions are somewhat on our side aside of the wind uh, we have we have a nice overcast day so the sun is gone uh, the pressure is dropping the tide is incoming right now I don't know if that's gonna affect it or not but hopefully uh, it affects it to the point where we get a quick bite that's uh, that's what I would love to have happen all right I'm gonna turn the camera off and hurry up get the second setup ready it's just gonna be redundant if I film that and uh, we'll cast out and have two baits soaking at the same time shoot that didn't go nowhere man I have to cast that again we have a headwind coming straight at us so that it's making it a little bit difficult to get this out there uh yeah same exact thing i we're not going to be able to get it out there far let's hope and pray that the drum come into the rocks i was about to say do you need a hand you good you need a hand okay good one man. Oh, man how long you been out since about 10 11 no about 11, 11. Oh, okay what are you using for bait crab, crab? Yes, yeah that's the ticket good catch man Thank you. yeah the crabs have been soaking for about two hours and I haven't really seen anything on these rods as far as them getting tapped so we're gonna check the, to see if we even have bait probably got some ninja black drum in case we do we want to make sure that we rebate no I got well I don't know it doesn't feel like I got my crab on anymore dude if they took my crab I'm gonna be it's gonna be puzzling and uh, let's see still got my crab okay the carapace fell off but we still got it so we can send that right back out there here we go um gosh I would love to cast further than that but that wind is preventing us from being able to get a darn good cast off We are definitely getting hit. Yep, on the big setup. There we go. There we are. Nice. I see him at the surface already. He's definitely way out there, but oh man, oh man. Texas City Dyke making it happen for us. Like I said, we, uh, I went away from here for the past two days and I got skunked at both locations. And so come back over here. The bite has been pretty hot. Now you're gonna have to wait some hours, but it's at least you can count on being able to catch some fish here. It's another nice black drum.
Come on, baby. Oh man, look at that. That looks as a nice little juvenile. These guys are getting ready for that spawn. Yeah, if you don't mind. Oh. Yeah, he's, this guy's feisty. Brought him in pretty quick. Oh no, you're, you're good. You should be able to just hold him just like that. I appreciate it. Yeah. I was gonna wait for him to kind of get tired. Uh, just hold him right there, be fine. There we go. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. No problem. I've been here before. <laughs> Man, I hope I don't catch him because I ain't got nobody. I know, there. right? I'll take that. Thank you so much. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a, a really crab nice one. A uh, crab. Where'd you get your crab? Uh, I bought it probably three days ago. I got some frozen from the uh, discount seafood. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, when Boys has them, I try to buy as many as I can and I oh, keep so them in. Them when I had them. Yeah, I, uh, I keep them in an ice chest. <clears throat> Thank you. Easy hook. Circle hook? Yep. Yeah, I use them a lot. Miss more fish, but. Oh, it's all good. Usually, usually less pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. baby and there he goes oh man I knew being able to come out here it was gonna produce let's get a another crab right back on there and see if we can get another one or two so got all that lump crab meat right there from the little swimmer I like going through that joint because it holds it the best for me just kind of a rinse and repeat kind of thing oh man i am just so happy y'all don't know how good it feels to get the skunk away from us looks like that little one's getting hit oh i could have swore it looked like it was getting hit we'll stare at it just for a quick second before turning on that oh yeah yeah, he's got it. Oh no! Look at that. He crushed it. Literally crushed it. It was in his mouth and dude must have just spit it out right as I was uh, trying to set that darn hook. <laughs> There's nothing worse than setting the hook on air at least that's what it feels like whenever there's no tension from a fish a big fish at that about liable to fall off these rocks behind me it's a little after 6 p.m. the sun's already gone down over the horizon and uh, it's very cold I'm having to take refuge behind the, the truck door uh, we're not lucky enough to get that third and final bite I am grateful for the one that we did get, uh, the, the two bites and then the one catch. The Texas City Dyke, man, I'm telling you what, of all places, it's been the most consistent place to catch some big black drum. Uh, all the other places that I've been to, it's just been super slow, zero bites. And uh, this is the one spot that I always find myself coming back to because it's got fish all right well that's gonna do it for this one y'all i thank you for 
clicking on today's video, stopping by and watching. If you find yourself constantly coming back to watch more of my content and you enjoy the videos, uh, do me a favor, click that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Uh, helps me out a ton. I'm very appreciative for all of y'all that have already subscribed. And uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna do it for this one. If you're interested in some of the gear that I am using, like you wanna know about the setups, go down into my video description and uh, click on those links. It'll take you to uh, view a lot of this gear right here. And if you make a purchase from anything from Amazon, that will earn us a small tiny commission. So I truly appreciate that as well. Until next time, tight lines, y'all.